Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Today I'm posting another video of Uzbek soup mastava. I have posted before and that one that you see on the picture I made with lamb. Today the preparation is going to be a little bit different and we are making mastava with meatballs. Mastava is a very popular soup in Uzbekistan and uh, in Uzbekistan they call it liquid plov because it will have all the ingredients that the plov will have so the meat, the carrots, the rice and the garbanzo beans. Are you excited? Let's get started! Here are all the ingredients you will need to make the soup and also will be listed in the description box below. And look at these ingredients. It's practically a fresh market on the platter. Doesn't it look beautiful? So let's see what we will need to make this beautiful soup. We will need one large onion, two large carrots, we also going to need uh, three tomatoes and I'm using Roma tomatoes. Two large potatoes, I'm using Yukon gold potatoes. Either two large bell peppers, different colors, or what I have, these little peppers that I have them in three different colors. That's going to make your soup very colorful. Four or five cloves of garlic. I know I was able to find four under this pile of peppers, but um, I have a fifth one somewhere. So yeah, five. We also will need a lot of fresh herbs and for the serving and for the soup. So I have dill, cilantro and parsley here. Since this soup called liquid plov, of course, we're going to need some rice. So I have half a cup of rice that I soaked in cold water for half an hour, then uh, washed and drained. One cup of garbanzo beans. If you're using the dry ones, you need to soak them a night before. And or if you use them from the jar, just uh, wash them and drain them. As far as the spices go, we're going to need one chili pepper, you could choose dry or fresh, one bay leaf, salt, pepper, and of course cumin seeds. I don't know any single savory dish in Uzbekistan that will go without cumin seeds. To make our soup rich in flavor, we're going to need one tablespoon of tomato paste, and to fry everything up and saute, we're going to need three to four tablespoons of cooking oil and choose the high smoking point cooking oil since it's all cooked at the higher temperature. The most important step in making soups, of course, get everything prepped. And I usually use utility knives versus chef's knives. Uh, I just find them easier to deal with vegetables. And all the vegetables, as I mentioned in... Um, uh, the part when we went through ingredients, they have to be cubed. But while I'm doing that, I would like to tell you why am I so excited about Uzbek cuisine. Uzbekistan is the country in the Central Asia and it is located on the Silk Road. And if you know, the Silk Road was not actually made out of silk and it was not actually a road. It was simply a network of trade roads connected the East to West from the 2nd century BCE to the 18th century CE. It was central to the economic, cultural, political and religious interactions between these regions. So practically... Um, speaking uh, people the merchants will take something from one country and then um, marking up the prices along the way will take it to another country and then pick up something from one country go to another country and they very rarely traveled the whole road but Uzbekistan was right in the middle of this road with the big trading cities like Samarkand, Tashkent and um, Bukhara and of course they had a lot of things to offer and a lot of things to gain from other countries. That's why Uzbek food, for example, um, I'm so excited about because it has representation of pretty much every single country in the world. You know, you have the representation of the uh, Asian countries, Arabic countries, and European countries. That is why it's so flavorful and so delicious. I remember visiting Uzbekistan when I was very young. 
Well, I mean, not that young, but young enough to remember that uh, the visit was absolutely amazing and the host that provided the stay for us put on the table the most amazing meal. The, f the, s the table was covered with food and before they prepared that, they went to the main bazaar in Tashkent that's called Alai Bazaar. We say it Alai, but on the building it says Olai. I don't know why, but I remember this place was huge. It was the size of the stadium. That's how big it was. And then as you go the aisles of this bazaar, you can get absolutely everything there from fresh produce uh, to pickled uh, um, vegetables to um, fresh fruit. And of course, uh, you will get the most amazing meat market there. I think it was the largest one that I remembered seeing in my life. It, you can get any cut or type of meat that you want to prepare a very delicious food at home. And of course, the dried fruit and uh, the bread. You cannot go anywhere without eating Uzbek bread, which is called lepioshka. And the most amazing ceramics where you can actually serve your dishes in. Um, if you ever visited Uzbekistan, you will understand my passion for their culture and food. So look, as I was prepping my vegetables and you were listening to my story, I have absolutely everything prepped for my beautiful dish. And that's how you should do. You stay organized and it will make your life in the kitchen so much easier, I promise you. In Uzbekistan, all the soups are made in this gigantic cast iron uh, wok called kazan. I'm just going to make it in the pot. Um, I don't have kazan because it has rounded bottom. It will not stay on electric uh, stove. So I have a seven quart pot here, which uh, I preheated and put three or four tablespoons of cooking oil and we're gonna add our onions pretty much all the soups are stein, starting with the sauteing of the vegetables so uh, this dish is uh, the vegetables are sauteed on a very high heat so it's pretty much like an Asian style um, stir frying <laughs> I should say onions bell peppers and carrots are gonna get sauteed until they soften then we're gonna add a garlic and we're gonna cook it along with the vegetables for a minute or so. And this spatula I'm using it, I actually got it from Uzbekistan. A friend brought it for me and they use the spatula for making plovs or pilafs. So then add your tomatoes and saute the tomatoes along with the vegetables. And as soon as uh, up, uh, your tomatoes are just gonna juice out a little bit, we're gonna add our tomato paste. And that juice in the tomatoes is gonna help us to dissolve uh, that paste um, evenly um, throughout all the vegetables and of course the spices are gonna go in the salt the pepper and the cumin uh, we're gonna add the chili pepper and the bay leaf um, at the last moment when we actually mm, add in the liquid to the soup and that's where <laughs> it is now so we're gonna add um, just water not any type of stock we're gonna add water to our soup so why water not any type of stock because the meatballs that we're going to add to our soup are going to create some stock for us that's why so um, we're just going to add garbanzo beans and that chili pepper and bay leaf we're gonna bring this soup to a boil um, and we're gonna simmer it for about half an hour until all the vegetables are completely ready at this point you can take out that chili pepper if you don't want your soup to be super spicy and the bay leaf now let's make meatballs for the soup to make meatballs we're gonna need a pound and a half of ground beef and we're gonna need a medium sized onion and the easiest way to mince the onion, uh, of course, you can grate it on the grater and then cry your eyes out. But I prefer to use this little chopper that I use in pretty much all my videos. So we're just going to mince it very fine. 
So add your minced onion with the juices along with all those juices into the ground beef. Then we're going to add some spices. I have salt, pepper, coriander, uh, chili pepper, and uh, of course cumin, uh, but in the powder form, um, not in the seed form. So we're just going to mix it all together and then you need to lift it and smack it a couple times like that. So everything pretty much comes together. And if you're making the meatball mix ahead of time, you need to cover it and keep it in the fridge. Meat, uh, meatballs for mastava made uh, relatively small. So I'm going to use this uh, very small ice cream scoop and then going to make them like a walnut size. And the reason they're made so small because you just want to get a lot of them as you serve the dish. So the tinier the better. So just make them and put them on the plate. And then in one swip, they're going to go into the soup and you have to mix it right away because the protein in the meat has to get sealed so your meatballs don't stick together. And then we're going to add our soaked um, and washed rice to the soup and also the potatoes. And I have to tell you we're at the finishing stages of making this beautiful soup. So we just need to cover it and uh, simmer it until the potatoes are uh, cooked. And of course, it's gonna take not too much time to cook the meatballs. And as you can see here, because the meatballs were cooking in that soup, it created a pretty rich broth for us. Uh, to finish our soup, we're just going to add uh, two thirds of our freshly chopped uh, herbs. And of course, taste the soup. You have to taste the soup. Uh, adjust your seasoning. You can add more salt or more pepper if you feel if it's under seasoned. And um, always, as every soup, it has to rest for at least five minutes. And after that, we are ready to serve it. Traditionally in Uzbekistan, every soup is served with Uzbek bread called lipyoshka. I have it on my channel, so I could link it down for you. You guys can check it out. And look at this soup, it's absolutely beautiful. As I was finishing my video, my kids were walking around and just waiting when they can eat it. So you can serve it along with some fresh herbs and sour cream. I hope you enjoyed this video as always. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you soon.